All right, guys, welcome back to day two in paradise at Shining Falls Lodge, and we are flying kayak fishing. With Old Town and Travel Manitoba, they flew in a bunch of fishing kayaks, which are now gonna live forever at Shining Falls. If you wanna book a flying fishing kayak trip, which I've never heard of before, I think I got a fish, I was trying to do the intro. You gotta come to Shining Falls. Today, we're gonna teach you how to jig for walleyes, and that's not a walleye at all, it's a chunky old perch probably the most popular technique for walleye fishing. And it's just kind of what a lot of people get into. It's not complicated, but there are a couple tips and tricks. That's jigging for walleye. So today I'm gonna go over some tips, some do's and don'ts for jigging for walleyes. And hopefully it'll put some more fish in your boat or in your kayak next time you head out. So the cool thing about a jig is it's so versatile. Today, basically we're gonna talk about just fishing it vertically up and down under the boat. So a big thing is boat control. And you know, that takes practice. You can anchor, You've got a trolling motor that has spot lock. There's a nice mark. So first off, probably one of the biggest mistakes I see. There are situations where this will catch fish. There's exceptions to a lot of these rules, but I would say number one mistake is people work their jig a little too actively. They'll rip it up with a jig and a minnow. That's what we're doing today, jig and minnow. The, the fish can smell that meat, so you don't have to move it much. You're kind of just holding it in their face. And sometimes there's the term dead sticking. You can just hold it completely still and fish eat it just with, you know, the rod sitting on the side of the boat. That is a good start right there. Nice golden walleye. We are having shore lunch later at the falls, which I'm looking forward to, but this guy we're gonna put back. We'll catch some more later. All right, so as far as a walleye jig goes, I want something with a strong hook. Um, and then size wise, something you can feel bottom with. I wanna make sure it's heavy enough you can feel bottom, especially if, if you're you know, inexperienced or taking an inexperienced angler out, I would favor the heavier side so they can feel bottom because even if you have a rod that's not sensitive, like it's a pull cue, maybe not what you should be using. With a heavy enough jig, you can still see your line go slack because that's when you know you're on bottom. You hit bottom, your line goes slack. So when I'm jigging for walleyes, like I'm gonna be doing today, uh, I'm keeping that jig between six inches of the bottom. I'm barely moving it. I, I wanna make sure that I'm making bottom contact you know, as much as possible. So a jig heavy enough to feel bottom is so key. The couple factors that'll affect that, if it's windy, if there's current, if you're fishing in deeper water, you know, those are all reasons you might need a favor deeper. I'm using, I think this is a quarter ounce now. You could go down to an eighth of an ounce. You go all the way up to like a one ounce jig if, if you needed to. But I would say in that quarter to three eighth ounce is a pretty common jig size. Um, but yeah, let's keep fishing and I'll run through the rest of the gear on what I like for a jigging setup. So on the topic of that first, you know, mistake I said, people working too aggressively, if you're working, you know, a hair jig, you could pop it a little more aggressively because you're trying to get a little more reaction. Right now, I'm using salted minnows. I'm using shiners, right? So it's like the fish are smelling it. They can come and inspect it because that's a real piece of meat. I'm not saying there's some times where, you know, a little more aggressive might trigger them, but for typical jigging, jigging minnow, yeah, I like to just hit bottom, lift a couple inches, hit bottom, and then I might just hold it four inches off bottom. I would hold it there for 30 seconds then drop back to bottom. But the biggest thing is just making bottom contact, lifting and dropping. I don't want to necessarily drag it in the mud because then you're more likely to get snagged. Just making sure I'm aware that I'm in that strike zone. Oh, I just dragged right into a fish. This feels better. I honestly thought I was snagged. Remember how I talked about just, you can give it no movement at all. This is a nice fish. This might be our nicest. While I the trip. Ooh, that is some good head shakes. I'm gonna tell you what I look for. That rod and reel once we land this fish. Oh yeah, woo hoo hoo, that's a good one. That is way bigger than anything we've seen yet. And I was just barely moving it. It was just dragging along the bottom. Look at that fish. All right, that is by far our biggest walleye of the trip so far. I don't know, 20, 23, 24 probably. And just barely picked up that jig, but uh, that's awesome. We're gonna put this, put this old walleye back. Gold Manitoba walleye. Hoo, hoo, hoo. She goes. Maybe not the most graceful, but that was awesome. So as far as a walleye rod for jigging, if if you're jigging vertically and not you know pitch jigging or hopping it back, I like to use something a little bit shorter. Uh, a, a shorter rod is a little easier to deal with in the kayak too. But this is a six three medium. You go six three medium light. You go 6'6", six, six if you're maybe casting a little more. But 6'3 is a pretty standard size for walleye jigging. This is the Walleye Series by G. Loomis. But yeah, 6'3", medium, 6'3", medium light. That'll be perfect. And then as far as line and reel goes, spinning reel, 
A thousand size is great. Uh, it holds you know, more than enough line. You could go 2,500 and maybe it'd be useful for more applications, but I like a thousand size spinning reel. This is a Stratic. I got five pound braid. You go up to 10 pound braid, but I really think braid is important for jigging for walleyes. It just, it gives you that much more sensitivity. It's that much easier when you're fishing in deeper water. A lot of people have this mono that might have been on their reel for a couple years and it's, it's stretchy. It's got a lot of memory and it makes it a lot tougher to feel fish. So, I mean, spend the money on the braid. It is a little more, but I'd go five to 10 pound braid. And then I use something called the fluorocarbon leader. Uh, in clear water, it becomes more important. In, in dirty water, it's less important, but basically it's a clear chunk. So I have probably about a three foot chunk of fluorocarbon leader. This is 12 pound. This is on the heavier side. You can go all the way down to six pound if the fish are a little fussier. And then as far as a knot to uh, connect it, that takes a little more work, but I'm using, uh, you know, you can either use an FG knot, Alberto knot, a uni to uni knot. The, the biggest thing is get comfortable with a knot, watch some YouTube videos of it, do it again and again and again, and then just make sure you can tie that, you know, that knot in the dark because it's an important connection knot. And I, I just think that you will catch way more fish having a clear leader than tying directly to the braid. Okay, we're gonna keep fishing. Yeah, so right now basically I'm just letting line out until I see it go slack. I know this might seem super basic, but you, there's sometimes I bring people in my boat that haven't jigged before, and like, how do you know you're on bottom? So I like using yellow braid. I like using this yellow Power Pro, and it's just so much easier to see. You can detect bites, you can see when it goes slack and everything. The thing is, I'm using that fluorocarbon leader, that clear chunk, so it doesn't really matter that I'm using yellow line. It's not scaring the fish, and it is, it's easier to see. Like, as soon as I see that line go slack, well, then I'm on the bottom, and I'm marking a nice fish right now. There he is, he's on it, look at that. We got him. Decent walleye. Cool boat sling this guy. So I'm waiting for that initial tick and then sometimes I'll just wait a couple seconds and let him sit on it. If he's eaten a real minnow, he's not probably gonna spit it out right away. So I feel that tick and then I just lifted slightly to feel the weight and I knew that fish was on. So this specific jig I'm using is by Frostbite, the ice fishing company, and they've got uh, a new jig called the head spin. So it's a propeller style jig, which is super cool because you give this bait any movement and that propeller is spinning on the nose. So it's a little vibration. It's got a little bit of flash because it's silver. And then the other cool thing on this jig is it's got a clip on top. So basically what that does is it holds that jig perfectly horizontal. So it gives it that natural presentation because a minnow isn't going to be swimming like this or something like that typically. It's going to be straight in the water column. So this, it's always balanced. So even if a fish bumps it, it moves around it sits perfectly. So a really cool jig, if you do some bass fishing, a lot of guys for smallies will use, you know, smelt style baits and they'll do something called hanging. But for walleyes too, it's just, it's nice knowing that your bait is gonna be sitting perfectly horizontal. Otherwise, you're not sides around, you're like, I don't know if my jig looks perfect, but now you know it looks perfect. So I'm a fan of this jig. Should be almost released by the time of this video. And then as far as the minnow, I go in the eye, you can go in the mouth and I thread it through the body and then straight, but something to check is to make sure there's no scales on the tip of the hook, because that'll affect your hook set. And the other thing, keep in mind when you're jigging, it's just basic physics, but if you keep your rod up high, if you're holding your rod up here and you're not paying attention, and you get a bite, think, your rod is already so high, so when you set the hook, boom, when you go up to hook that fish, you've got no power. You're not gonna get a nice strong hook set. So what I like to do is I'll keep my rod tip a couple inches off the bottom. I'll try to keep it a foot from the water, and then when you set the hook, you've got way more power because your rod isn't up in the sky already. It's like trying to take a slap shot when your you know, stick's already fully extended, right? You gotta do the wind up. So it's, I don't wanna say winding up, but you're just holding your rod in the right position. It's a decent mark down there. Always going down, I think he's going down for my jig. So I'm just holding it still, hitting bottom, lifting. And he just throttled it. That's a small fish. No, not that small. When I feel that light bump, sometimes I'll just wait a second. Sometimes they'll hit it hard and you snap it right away. But jig and walleyes, a jig and a minnow catches a lot of big walleye. This is what we're using. Some shiner minnows. It's been a good morning. You know, as far as boat control goes, it is nice to keep it vertical, but you can drift. You know, with my kayak right now, I'm doing like a slow back pedal. Oh, wow. And it just helps you cover territory. If you're marking fish, obviously you might want to stay on top of them, but there's nothing wrong with moving around a little bit. Another nice one. All right, it is time for some shore lunch walleyes. 
the base of a waterfall. How Canadian does it get? If you've not had a walleye shore lunch before, you are missing out. Welcome back to Shore Lunch. My favorite meal. If I'd eat one meal for the rest of my life, it would be Shore Lunch. And look at this incredible location. This is the falls of Shining Falls behind us. It's, uh, it's raging right now. It's been high water in Manitoba all year. You know, I made jokes about shooting it with my kayak. I don't know. Do you think I'd survive? Let's see what the boss has planned here. What's on the menu? Walleye, or as we call it here, some pickerel. We got some uh, deep fried mushrooms as appetizers there. Unreal. Have you have you shot the rapids before? Water We've done the left hand side in the little kayak, yeah. but it was a little bit lower. I'm not condoning it. You better have signed the waiver <laughs> to try yeah. it. Show me your little your gadget. It is thermometer. Laser thermometer, infrared thermometer. This is the only place. I've been to a lot of lodges and seen a lot of shore lunches. They bring the laser thermometer to get the perfect temperature. When I talk about shore lunch, your oil not being hot enough is the worst. And these guys yep. have it down to a science. No question. <laughs> My belly's feeling good. Delicious shore lunch. Uh, we're going back to jig up some more walleyes. All right, we're headed back to the kayaks. All right, we're back after short lunch, ready to jig up some more walleyes. Just another day in paradise. There's the mother load. Here we're dropping to the danger zone. Here we go. Took a little bit of finesse. We're marking lots of fish. Chunky one. That one's got some sort of growth on the side, but. There you go, thump that jig nice and hard. And there's nothing wrong with waiting a couple seconds when you feel that bite, because I mean, especially if you're using bait, they're gonna hold on to it for a little bit. So I'd rather just take a second or two, make sure the fish has it before I set the hook. And it, also you can use gulp minnows. I got a lot of confidence with gulp minnows, gulp leeches, that sort of stuff. That shore lunch always slows a person down. Oh, there we go. There we go, look at this. It's small, you can feel the weight though. Oh, not that small. I misjudged that one. Whoa! A fish just launched. Oh my. Wow, they are just bright yellow. That fish got mangled by something. He's like missing part of his gill plate. Look at that. Cool. Another one. This flying fishing will ruin you for walleye fishing. So one of the other, I would say, you know, biggest mistakes I made walleye fishing, this wasn't specifically to jig fishing, and this, this is something I'm guilty of, I did it for many years, was using those big steel leaders. I always justified it because there's pike around, but if you really want to target walleye, specifically target walleyes, you got to ditch that steel leader. Yeah, you might get bit off by the odd pike, but you can definitely still land pike with just a floral leader like this, depending on how he's hooked. But it's um, that big metal leader, obviously the clear fluorocarbon leader we talked about earlier, is gonna give you the invisibility, but also just a steel leader, just the lure doesn't, it doesn't look nearly as natural in the water. For a pike, when you're ripping a lure fast, you can definitely get away with it, but not, not that you don't catch walleyes with steel leaders. Once again, there's always exceptions. You get into a bite where the walleyes are just stupid and eating everything, you'll catch them with steel leaders. But you can ditch that steel leader, switch to braid with a floral leader, not over jig your jig. Those three things, four things, you're gonna catch a lot more walleyes. Oh, something's bumping me. Here we go. Sometimes just waiting pays off. Big old sauger. It's been a little slower this afternoon than the morning, but got a couple of fish. It's all right. Ooh, I think there's a fish. Drop that rod to pull lower. Look at that. That was pretty instant. Another little sauger. It's a good place to Practice your jigging and hook setting when there's lots of fish around. Sometimes you're at those places, you're fishing those bites where you only get a couple bites, but they're big. Here, 
you get a lot of practice. A lot of chance to swing and miss if you need. Ooh, there's a fish. Feisty. Backlit walleyes.